The other thing that's exciting are the other BTK inhibitors. So of course, you know, you ask how many of these BTK inhibitors we, we need. I don't know the answer to that, but the next one coming along that we're going to start hearing a lot about is Zanubrutinib. Zanubrutinib just got approval in relapsed mantle cell lymphoma, and now we have data presented here at the a ASH meeting from Contam and his colleagues about using Zanubrutinib in the upfront and relapse settings. And it also appears to be very, very well tolerated with low rates of AFib, hypertension, and major bleeding. And then there's this new category of what we call reversible or non-covalent binding BTK inhibitors. And there are three major ones that are uh, presented here at the meeting. The first is one known as ARQ531. It's from RQL. The impressive data in a very small number of patients is, take, is worth taking note of. Uh, high response rates and in responses in patients with Richter transformation, which we know are particularly difficult patients. The next one is a drug called LOXO305. Also data here showing that it's active. And these agents are showing that they're active in people who have a mutation or who are resistant to ibrutinib or acalabrutinib. We do know that resistance is a problem with those agents. Those uh, mutations that happen in the BTK binding pocket at the cysteine 481 position are th the reason that most people relapse. And because these are irreversible inhibitors where they cycle on and off and actually don't bind in the binding pocket that way, there's potential to overcome resistance. And actually these agents that I just mentioned have shown that they can overcome resistance in a small number of patients who are ibrutinib resistant. And I should just to be complete mention the last drug which is known as Vecabrutinib. And Vecabrutinib also is showing activity and we'll have to see where all these play out but we're excited that we have more tools in the toolbox for us.